Hello, this is Tony Hart from RealClimateScience.com. If climate alarmists understood science, there wouldn't be any climate alarmists. In this video, I'm going to discuss the basics of how glaciers actually work and some of the misunderstandings which climate alarmists maintain about them. During World War II, some U.S. military planes went down in a snowstorm over Greenland. Over the next 60 years or so, the planes got buried under 250 feet of ice. The most famous of these planes, Glacier Girl, was recently dug out and is now flying once again. A lot more snow falls on the surface of Greenland every year than melts. As a result of this excess accumulation of snow, the ice is very thick. It's about two miles thick in the center of the Greenland ice sheet. This graph from the Danish Meteorological Institute shows the amount of snow accumulation or melt on Greenland's surface over the last 12 months. Anytime the blue line is above zero, that means that Greenland's surface gained mass on that day. On one day near the end of May, Greenland's surface gained 12 billion tons of snow. And then when summer hit about 12 weeks ago, Greenland tended to lose ice rather than gain it. On a couple of days near the end of July, Greenland lost 8 billion tons of snow and ice due to melt. The blue line in the bottom graph is the surface mass balance. It's the total difference between accumulation and melt since the start of September last year. The surface of Greenland gained about 400 billion tons of ice since the start of September last year, which is a little bit above the 1981 to 2010 average. For three of the last five years, the surface mass balance of Greenland has been above average. 2017, 2018, and this year all gained above average amounts of snow and ice. Last year was slightly below average, and 2019 was well below average, although the surface of Greenland still gained more than 150 billion tons of ice in 2019. Over the past five years, Greenland's surface has gained nearly 2 trillion tons of ice, which is about 500 billion tons above average. In this visualization, I stacked the five different years on top of each other, but in this one I laid them out end to end. Once again, over the last five years, Greenland's surface has gained nearly 2 trillion tons of ice. All of this excess ice has to go somewhere, though, to maintain equilibrium. What happens is that gravity pulls the ice down towards the sea in what is known as glaciers. Glaciers are quite literally rivers of ice, except that the water is frozen and flows more slowly. When the glaciers get to the sea, they calve off icebergs into the ocean, which float away and eventually melt. Sometimes ships bump into these icebergs like the Titanic did almost a century ago. This is the iceberg which sank the Titanic. Remember that most of the ice is below the water and can't be seen. The reason that Greenland glaciers calve off icebergs is because there's an excess amount of snow in the interior which has to go somewhere, so it flows down to the sea, falls in the ocean, and floats away. Calving icebergs is a sign of a healthy, growing glacier, but climate alarmists interpret it the exact opposite way. They believe that calving icebergs is an indication of a melting Arctic and that the ice will soon be gone. Their incredibly poor understanding of science is difficult to comprehend, but apparently being vocally ignorant pays really well for climate alarmists. There were a couple of days during July when quite a bit of ice melted off the surface of Greenland. But as we already discussed, the total surface mass balance of Greenland was well above average. Greenland's surface gained about 400 billion tons of ice over the last 12 months. But climate alarmists don't understand the bigger picture, so they cherry pick a couple days when there was a lot of melting going on and get hysterical about it. Those two days of melt in July were described as a massive melting event after a record heat wave. And last week, the press was hysterically parroting this story. Rainfalls at the summit of Greenland ice sheet for the first time on record. This is good theater, but reality is that they had rain in the center of the Greenland ice sheet on two days in 1950, and it also occurred in 1933. Ten years ago, climate alarmists were hysterical when a big chunk of ice broke off of the Petermann Glacier in Greenland. So let's see what the Petermann Glacier has done over the last decade. This is August 14, 2012. This is August 14, 2015, 2019, 
And this year, the Peter Mon Glacier has been growing more than one kilometer per year. But the press won't talk about it. What they will talk about is the next time a big chunk of ice breaks off of the Peter Mon Glacier. This cycle of glaciers growing and then calving off icebergs will repeat over and over again, just like it's done throughout history. Glaciers in Greenland have been melting for a very long time. Here's a story from 1903. Glaciers disappear. The ice in Greenland is melting more rapidly than it's formed. Comparison of the descriptions of the Jacob Chauvin Glacier shows that its edge has receded 8 miles since 1850 and it's lost 20 to 30 feet in depth. They also reported that New Zealand had gone further than any other nation in realizing the ideal state of the socialist. So nothing's really changed over the last 120 years. In 1910, it was reported that glaciers were retreating all over the entire planet. And according to NASA, 1910 was the coldest year on record. Many of Greenland's glaciers are going now during NASA's hottest year on record, but they were retreating rapidly during NASA's coldest years on record. Our leading climate experts at NASA believe that ice melts when it's cold and grows when it's warm. Nothing that climate alarmists believe has anything to do with science or anything to do with reality. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on this madness for the past 13 years. You can visit him, Kyrie, and Caesar on the web at realclimatescience.com.